This is kind of a screenshot of the tool I'll open up in a second. Um, but one way to use it is, is uh, you can see that the, the, there's four boxes here, and the tool allows you to evaluate four different scenarios, and each scenario is, is a different configuration of, of envelope variables. So you can see they're all fixed at a window-to-wall ratio on the top of 25%. Um, but in, in this case, we have our worst scenario for air tightness um, in the least insulation which corresponds to the, the quickest uh, rate of heat loss within the apartment. But as we start to tighten up the building envelope, um, seal, seal cracks in the walls and windows, um, increase the insulation layers, and improve the glazing from single to double and so on, we see that the rate that you lose heat to the, the outdoors decreases and extends that period of time which you can expect to stay above 50 degrees. So that's about a 30 degree difference between the best and the worst scenario. And in the best scenario, you only go down to 60 degrees for the, the first few days and then towards the 50. But in the worst, you're really at, you're at 20, right. 20 degrees. That's a massive difference between, between the two. If yeah, question. Of, of the uh, four factors that you kind of took into account here, did you see one that stood out as being more impactful mm. than yeah. others? Great question. Um, it it kind of leads on to this. Uh, this is the same um, same climate. Uh, it's an apartment in New York. Here we've isolated, uh, we've kept these parameters fixed, the 25% window to wall ratio, the R value, and the glazing type, but we're just adjusting the air tightness. And we found in many different climates, you know, adjusting or air tightness has a very large impact on, on passive survivability. So this is one of the key ones. And then <coughs> beyond that, um, glass, the performance of the glass in, in the wall insulation is really important for the winter. In the summer, there's also a range of performance possible. Um, you can see in, in a case with um, mainly in, in the summer, it comes down to you know, how much solar heat gain you're getting into the space. So any effort, design effort, to minimize the, the solar gains to the space um, while operating windows at nighttime um, really allows you to, to kind of stabilize and stay below the peak outside air temperature, which is this gray line. Um, in the worst case, with a single glazed uh, facade facing south, all these summer cases face south, um, you really, your peak temperature is matching or exceeding the outside air peak temperature. Um, so minimizing those gains um, and kind of shading the exposed, any exposed thermal mass uh, of the wall allows you to stabilize and, and slowly gain. I mean, you're not, yeah. Um, and I think another nice aspect of the tool is uh, this element down here, which just allows you to um, overlay uh, the periods, identify the periods when your inside air temperature exceeds that 90 degree threshold, Fahrenheit threshold. So what we're looking at is um, we're trying to uh, select design variables, um, make improvements that minimize both the duration and the amount of time that this area is shaded. Uh, so at this point, um, and these, um, the results of this tool you'll find um, are match very closely generally um, to some of the earlier research for babies cold inside. Um, in, in summarizing, kind of in the winter, you uh, air infiltration, uh, reducing air leakage through the facade and insulating the facade is very critical. In the summer, it's about um, shading the windows or selecting um, a, an appropriate glass with the right solar heat gain coefficient to, to minimize those solar gains.